Today we're here in Boudetort County, Boudetort, I don't know how the shit you pronounce that, it doesn't matter. Anyway, we're out here in Virginia, near the West Virginia line, and these beautiful Cambrian shales, roughly 500 million year old shales, half a billion years old, all right, think of the Cambrian explosion, all right, when life, you know, first exploded in those oceans, you get all the really cool, complex, multicellular life like the trilobites and with the shit. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is, we're here on these sketchy, so somewhat barren slopes at a dry microsite that's otherwise surrounded by a uh, pretty wet, uh, probably tick infested forest, but I haven't had any ticks yet. Anyway, here's the plant we're trying to look at. Areogonum alenii. Look at those beautiful hairy leaves here that are kind of silvery. The fact they're kind of silvery and kind of chalky colored will tell you tend to like these, these dry sites, okay? They're restricted to these dry sites. They have all the adaptations for the uh, uh, aridity and the full exposure to the sun, and that's why they need to grow on these rock outcrops where there's almost no, no soil. See that? There's what they look like when they're young. Look at the leaves. Look at how fuzzy those are. Look at how tomatose, all right? The hairier on the underside, because that's where all the stomata is, all right? And again, if they were hairy up top, then that would restrict the uh, sunlight coming in. Wouldn't be able to do photosynthesis too nice, all right? But you do see really hairy leaves when you get to the deserts, all right? They're, they're willing to make the exchange. Less photosynthesis for more protection from the sun on the dry. Anyway, uh, that's where all the stomata are. That's where they're letting in uh, CO2 and releasing oxygen water vapor. But remarkable about this genus is 98% of this genus, and there's a shit ton of species in this genus. The buckwheats are the common name. Name, all right, probably 300 species or more in the genus, many more undescribed, primarily that are out west. But you do get a couple species east of that 100th meridian in the eastern half of the United States, which is remarkable because that's what we call the disjunction. Como se dice nice when you got most of a certain group of plants, evolutionary lineage of plants out west, and then you get a few uh, that just occur sporadically. Again, in this case, at dry micro sites surrounded by otherwise very mesic forest. These are basically at the tail end of flowering right there. Typical buckwheat morphology you got in involucre. It's like a little vase that holds the flowers. Let's see if we can get the involucre in there nice. See that? There's the involucre, and then the individual flowers pour out of that involucre. And then you have a stipe and a base. The stipe connects to the base. They, they just, these flowers dehiss uh, when it's uh, done. See, there's those flowers. Look at that. What a great view. Of those involucres. See that it's still flowering because it's getting more heat. We're higher up in a sketchier, more precarious site than down below, but also a drier site. You got that Antonaria down there, and then there's those basal leaves for that, for that buckwheat. What a cool disjunction for the genus Areogonum. Huh? Always zoom out, get a get a glimpse of the bigger picture. You know, how'd this get here? How far back did it split off from the western species? And everything here just did again a dry micro site surrounded by the more mesic water forest. Anyway, that's all I got. Have a great day. Go fuck yourself. Bye.